In alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam Allah wa rasulullah. You guys did very good on the quiz. We're going to now pick up where we left off. Ali had arrived in Basra to face Aisha. He now had an army of over 20,000 strong. But he was not happy with his army of men because the majority of the men in his army were the men who played a role in the rebellion and murder of Uthman. So he was not pleased with the, the, the caliber of men he had uh, calling themselves supporting him. As I was speaking about earlier on the quiz, this was not a matter of trust. This was a matter of something that was sacrilege, you know, to kill a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to kill, to kill the leader over the Muslims. This was an outrage. This was a sacrilege in Islam. So that showed the caliber, the mentality, the, 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 the faith of the men that he had in his army. So it wasn't a matter of trust. It was a matter of embarrassment. It was a matter of shame. Does everybody understand that? This was not trust. This was shame. Ali was ashamed of the army he gathered because they were just ruthless, low-grade men. Okay? But he arrived in Basra. Nonetheless, with what he had, he had to make do with what he had. And he wanted to make sure that everybody understood that he was not here, not there to fight. Instead, he came to make peace. And he really tried to emphasize this with the low caliber men he had. He told them, we are not here to fight against the mother of the believer. We are not here to fight, raise our hand against any other Muslim. Instead, he said, I think this is a big misunderstanding. And I want to try to resolve this as the leader over the Muslims peacefully. And he told his men, let, if do not raise your swords in battle, let the other side take the first step. If they do not listen to reason, he said, I do not want it to be on my conscience or, or any of yours that we were the ones that took the initiative to fight against another Muslim because this is a sacrilege. So he stressed this. I want you guys to know he stressed this to his men just as Aisha. Remember, Aisha did the same thing. When Aisha had arrived in Basra, she did the gave the same speech telling her supporters that she had not come there to fight. She came there to try to resolve the issue peacefully. All she wanted the people of Basra to do was to turn over to her all the men responsible for the rebellion against Uthman. That's all she wanted. She wanted to hold them men accountable. Okay. Well, here you can see Ali gave a similar speech to his men. And after addressing his army, Ali then sent a peace mission to address Aisha. And this mission was led by a man, man named Kaka, who was a prominent leader from Kufa, a well-respected warrior. He fought uh, under the caliphate of Abu Bakr, and he fought under the caliphate of Umar against the Romans and the Persians. So this is why he sent him, because he's a man that even Aisha respected. Because Aisha knew that he worked well with her father and with Umar. And when Ali sent these men out, he told them, I do not want you to adopt a threatening or a patronizing attitude. He told them you are to make no attempt to uh, intimidate Aisha. And make her think that you're, we're coming here uh, uh, forcefully. He said, I want the negotiations between us to be a heart-to-heart -heart dialogue. And every possible effort is to be made to remove any misunderstandings we have between us. And he told the men 
you are to show Aisha the due respect the due respect that she is deserved because she is one of the wives of the prophet. She's the mother of the believers. He said, also give her a message of goodwill, telling her that in spite of all these unfortunate misunderstandings, I still regard her as a mother. And I expect you guys to treat her as such. So here you can see Ali's intent was good. He did not intend to bring any harm to Aisha or any of the other Muslims, just like it wasn't her intent either. And when he sent his messengers, Aisha, Telha, and Zubair met them with courtesy. Because remember, Telha and Zubair were Aisha's uh, uh, right-hand generals. And the, the, the messengers that Ali sent, they delivered the message just the way he told them to. And Aisha was happy because, remember, she wanted to resolve this peacefully, too. She did not want to see any more bloodshed amongst the Muslims. In fact, she told the messengers that she would be happy if she and Ali could, to, could together uh, resolve the misunderstandings and bring unity back to the Muslim nation. So the messenger, Ka'aka, he asked Aisha, what was it? Uh, that she wanted, uh, what made her take to the field to fight. She said the reason why she did what she did, and she said, you tell Ali this, the reason I did what I did was I simply wanted to seek vengeance or kisas for the blood of Uthman. I wanted to end what the rebels did, and I wanted to, to promote the cause of Islam. So when she explained that, Kuaka asked her, he said, do you think Ali is responsible? Do you think that Ali played a role in killing Uthman? And I want you guys to know, she answered, she said no. She said, I did not ever accuse Ali of being involved in Uthman's murder. She said, I know that Ali would never do that. She said, my only problem with Ali was that I wanted him to take action immediately to apprehend the rebels who did kill Uthman. She said, but never did I accuse him or never did I think that he played a role in Uthman's assassination. So then Kaka asked her, he said, well, do you think that one man played the role in the murder or do you think this was an action of a mob? Aisha said, of course, it was an act of an entire mob. And then Kuaka asked her, he said, Had, have things settled down now that you've got your revenge here in Basra? Have things settled down? And Aisha said, no, they have not settled down. In fact, they're still in disarray. And that's when Kuaka told her, he said, if things are unsettled, even though you came to Basra and you executed everyone that you thought possible who played a role in his murder and things are not settled, how could you expect Ali as new, newly appointed leader, forced into that position as a leader, how could you expect him to take action against the people when they were still in Medina, the rebels were still in Medina and they were still controlling the situation? He said, remember, Ali did not ask to be the leader. The rebels forced him to take that position. And they also, you know, uh, threatened the people of Medina. He said, so even though he was appointed the leader, the rebels were all around him. How could you expect him to say, okay, I'm going to avenge Uthman right now, when he didn't even have the power? And when the man asked this question to Aisha, both she and Telha and Zubair, they all look silly. They didn't have no answer. They hadn't thought of that. How can Ali bring vengeance quickly when he still was not even in control? His, the city of Medina was populated with the darn rebels. And that's when Kaka asked another question. He said, Aisha, do you know that by rebelling against Ali, you have done a worse harm? She said, how is that? He said, by rebelling against Ali, 
You've given the rebels what they wanted. You have now forced Ali to deal with you, another believer, instead of dealing with the true murderers of Uthman. He says, so basically, Aisha, you played into the hands of the rebels. You played into their hands. And when he said this to Aisha, this is when she began to really think about her actions. This is when Aisha began to really feel bad. She said, you know what? I never looked at it like that. I did play into their hands. He said, yes, you've allowed the rebels to pit two eminent companions against each other. They've pitted you and Ali against each other. Tell Han Zubair against each Ali. Look at these. We are all eminent companions of the prophet. And you allowed Shaitan and the rebels to pin y'all against each other. Divide and conquer. What did the prophet say before he died? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said when uh, Islam spread throughout Arabia, Shaitan became angry because he couldn't stop the Arabs from converting to Islam. So Shaitan said, well, since I couldn't stop them from converting to Islam, I will attack them in their hearts. I will cause them to hate each other, to argue with each other, to fight with each other, and to eventually destroy one another. And that's what Shaitan had done. And Aisha thought about it. She said, oh, my God, I didn't realize this. You're right. We played into their hands. We're living what the prophet said would happen. We, are, we have allowed shaitan to cause us to kill each other and destroy each other. So then Aisha looked at Kaka and she said, well, what do you suggest that I do? What should I do? He said, I suggest that instead of fighting, make peace. I suggest that you strengthen the hands of Ali and work together. And when law and order is fully established, the Muslims acting in concert should determine how the vengeance of Uthman should be taken together. In other words, he told her this is what Ali wanted to do. Ali never said he would not bring to justice the people who killed Uthman. All Ali asked you and Muawiyah to do was wait. Wait for him to get control over Medina. Wait for him to get control as the new leader. And then he would meet with you all together as one, all the eminent companions as one, and together we'll, we'll stand united and deal with the rebels. That was always Ali's uh, plan. And when he explained this to Aisha, she looked at him and she said, if this is what Ali desires, then I agree. We will make peace on these terms. So here you can see all of this when neither one of them really wanted to fight. But now Aisha realized the role, how she played into the hands of Shaitan. Telha and Zubair realized it too. They all began to see we all played into the hands of Shaitan. Here we are fighting and killing each other. When we should have worked with Ali, we should have stood with Ali, supported him. Why did the prophet say he was the fourth best of this nation? He wasn't better than Uthman, but he was better than Aisha. He was better than Telha. He was better than Azubair. He was the fourth best of this nation. So despite what happened, when he rose up as caliph and leader, everyone should have given him their support. This is the mistake that Aisha, Telha, and Zubair realized they made. They all should have given their support to him and met with him like he wanted them to do. Remember, he offered Telha. He offered Zubair to stay in Medina with him, not as prisoners. He wanted them to stay with him as his counsel to show the rest of the Muslim world we are united. We are the eminent companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We stand united as one, and we will deal with the rebels. That's all Ali wanted. But no, they played into the hands of shaitan. So thus, back to Ali to report the success of his mission, the success of his meeting with her. 
but did it end this way. Now that Aisha and Telha and Zubair all saw the mistake that they all made by not standing in support of Ali from the beginning. Did this end peacefully? Or was it too late? Was it another issue of too late? And what about Muawiyah? Remember, Muawiyah was supposedly on his way from Syria. Aisha had sent that letter to him, telling him to step up to the plate. So we'll stop right here for today. I want you guys to ponder this because this happens to so many of us. We're close friends, good Muslims. We allow shaitan to come between us and cause us to turn and fight against each other. And then we realize when it's too late almost that, you know, this was wrong. Well, we should have supported each other. We're fighting over something stupid, petty. But the damage has already been done. Lives have been killed, you know, have been taken. The hurt, the pain. How did these companions make it right? We'll continue tomorrow. So we'll stop right.